Good morning, YouTube. Welcome to the Reptile Barn. Uh, I'm ever so slightly concerned about these ball python eggs here, and I was gonna go to check on them, and then I figured I'd just film it so you guys could see what I'm talking about, and uh, hopefully we'll see some good signs here. So these are only three or four days from their hatch date. Um, I'll move this off. They're just, they're very collapsed, however, now that I'm touching them, they feel pretty good. So that's good. So I was just concerned because they got really dried out. Um, I mean really dried out. Sorry, I just realized I don't know if I've been pointing the phone in the right spot. <laughs> so there's a pile of, of, of uh, four eggs here. Three on the bottom, and then there's this really collapsed one on the top. Um, they're nice and pliable. They're starting to turn really soft, which is a good sign. Um, all this moss is here because they had been super, super dried out. Um, I'm not sure what happened. Uh, when I first pulled the clutch, they were a little bit dry, which means they probably sat for a little longer than they should have uh, in the enclosure with the female um, and the humidity wasn't high enough probably was about 24 hours rather than I usually try and catch them within you know four hours at most if I possibly can when I know a female is gonna lay I, I check at least through the side of the tub without having to you know constantly open it and bother her just constantly but I didn't on this one because I didn't realize that she was gravid um, so I figured I'd check these and then I'll leave them again until they hatch I will not open it again. I don't want them to lose more humidity, but the, the moss helps a lot. This is just sphagnum moss, nothing special. I got it pretty wet. I'll pile it back on here. Everything looks good. No mold whatsoever. Uh, there's a little bit of stains from the moss, but that's fine. You can see this egg has just this part that didn't calcify properly, and it's almost like a window. I can't really see a snake inside of there. It's too thick. Um, but uh, I'm heartened. I feel like there's probably four perfectly healthy snakes in here, um, is my guess. Uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm relieved. I was really worried because partway into incubation, I checked on them and they were even more dried out and collapsed. Uh, that's when I added the moss. Uh, I don't like having wet stuff touching the shells. It makes me worry about mold, but there's no mold here whatsoever. I don't see anything concerning and it did seem to stop the desiccation that the eggs had started to go under and I think we caught it in time um, so yeah guys you know I always asked how we incubate our eggs and while we have a really 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 high success rate um, you know when we get fertile eggs with strong veins more than 99% of them hatch perfectly with no issues. Um, but uh, sometimes you get eggs that don't have very strong veins or aren't fertile at all or have really bad calcification where most of the egg looks like that or even worse and there's very little of that like clean white color. Um, you know, if the power goes out, of course, and the temperature plummets or, or whatever. These can all be problems. So, um, I did want to say, even though I've, I've walked people through you know, how we do it, where I've got the perlite in the bottom, um, or whatever your substrate is, and then I have this egg diffuser panel, or this egg diffuser panel, this light diffuser panel, so the eggs aren't sitting in wet substrate. There's a little bit of separation, but it lets all that humidity up through. Uh, I don't usually have the moss in here, that was just a special case. And then we cover it in press and seal. That is my basic method. The reason I have this, these straws here is just to hold the press and seal above the eggs because they had been kind of um, poking up above the level of the, of the edge of the tub here and I didn't want the press and seal actually touching them. But yeah, so even though that's the method I'm always talking about and it works really, really well. That does not mean don't check on your eggs. <laughs> Do check on your eggs for sure. Um, not constantly. You don't want them to dry out or have a bunch of temperature fluctuations, but it is good to check on them every so often so that you can adjust if needed. 
and this is one adjustment that we made that I honestly do think did the trick. I think we're gonna make it. Um, just a few more days, and I'll have another video with little hatchlings. Is my hope. Is my sincere hope. And now I'll be extra sad if they if something went wrong because I'm I think they're good now. Um, you know, as they approach their hatch day, the shell seems to get a little thinner and more pliable and softer, uh, which of course, you know, they need that so they can cut through it more easily. Um, so everything looks good. Everything looks good. I was really worried that adding all this wet moss would, would cause mold issues, but it hasn't. I can see that the water level has dropped all the way down. If I'm looking through the side of the tub here, I like there to actually be water and there's not. You can see condensation inside there. So I'm gonna add a little bit of water, maybe just an inch or so. I don't want it all the way up to the egg, the light diffuser panel, but uh, just so that there's a lot of humidity for these last couple days still pumping up through here. So I'll do that, I'll stick them back in the incubator. I incubate at 89 degrees. Hopefully we've got some beautiful little combo clowns here hatching out in a couple of days. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time, we're the Reptile Barn.